What's up guys, this is Balash from Racing Brick. Today I will show you one of the two LEGO Technic sets coming on the 1st of August. This set is the first one since the 42080 Forest Machine with pneumatics, so I'm pretty excited. This is the 42128 Heavy Duty Tow Truck. Well, wait, let's roll back a bit and start with the box. The front is dominated by the huge truck with a nice landscape in the background. Based on the signs and the yellow road marking, I guess we are in the US, but the style of the truck gives it away too. On the back of the box we see the impressive size of the truck, 58 cm is a lot. Some hints about the features and details, but I'm sure you want to see them live, so let's open the box. We get 11 numbered bags and 3 unnumbered ones. Those have the new 11 module long flip flop beams, another with the tires and the boom parts, and one with the pneumatic hoses. The manual and the sticker sheet come together in a plastic bag. It's interesting to see the 16 new beams in the separate bag, maybe they were produced elsewhere. The set also has some of the longer ones as well, but they are in the respective numbered bag. The sticker sheet is quite big, most of the stickers are for the big panels, but we also get some 1x1 one one ones. The manual has nothing special in it, the build is only split to 4 phases, and here is the part list at the end of the book if you are interested. Now let's start building. The process starts with the chassis, we use the good old 5x7 Technic frames mostly. We can see the return of the orange T-shaped 3x3 beam after its brief appearance in the V22 Osprey set. Hopefully this set will not disappear and the part will be more widely available. Two differentials are added for the rear wheels. Make sure to pay attention to the correct orientation. They should rotate in the same direction when you turn the central shaft. The whole frame and the axles are reinforced with several layers of beams. Here comes a contraption where the purpose is yet unclear. We've got standard gears, warm gears, let's add it to the chassis to see what's going on. With only a few pieces later the picture becomes clear. One side will control the lowering of the third axle, the other side will probably rotate the crane. We add the basic control for the two other manual functions, although they are not visible yet. At the end of bag 1 we already see much more. The rear outriggers are in place, so you can see how they are operated. The side ones are not connected yet. The other knob will control the tow bar elevation with those two linear actuators. We start to build the wheel lift at the rear of the truck, and here is the slim pneumatic cylinder from the Aerox set. The tubes need to be measured as the length is in millimeters or inches. Apparently they are a few millimeters longer than indicated. This one's supposed to be 160. This assembly does not seem to be special, but there are several specific pieces and half beams put together in a clever way to have the exact connections and forms needed. Time to attach it to the main structure and add more tubes. After those the linear actuators are also connected. Some side panels are added and stickers start to pop up as well, along with the smaller details like the rear lights. Here comes the side outrigger that is operated by a linear actuator. Once both outriggers are installed, they need to be synchronized with the rear ones. If they were not deployed, then you will feel some resistance as the clutches are engaged, but once they are in the same position, then the operation will become smooth and easy. We added the three pneumatic switches with the smaller tubes, and my favorite tiny stickers of course. The big blue pump is also added with even more spaghetti, let's attach it to the already installed ones. This is a fairly tricky connection to align all pins and pinholes, but it works at the end. After some structural reinforcements, the turntable is added that holds the boom. Once the tank gear is in place, we can test if it works. The final little mechanism for this bag belongs to the hand of gas steering, I guess. Bag 3 begins with the front axle. It's a pretty conventional setup so far. Now this is something interesting. A studied Technic structure built sideways to support the pistons. Take a look here how the shafts for the different functions were swapped. Now steering is controlled by the upper axle and the lower axle drives the fake engine. Let's connect the assembly to the main build. Here you can see how the hand of gut steering will work. An interesting big black stack of beams. I think this will be the bottom of the cabin. We rarely see something like this in a Technic build. We get a simple but good looking dashboard, a gear shifter and the steering wheel, which is not functional unfortunately. The cabin starts to take shape with the seats, doors and the side panels. Here comes the roof that looks simple for the first sight, but it has quite a few different layers with the beams added sideways. The roof is now finished and the hand of god control knob is in place as well. Time to add some small details. This is the section that tricked us earlier. 
Unfortunately, this is not a real air tank. More details are added to the engine bay and the mufflers are also mounted with the exhaust pipes. The final touch from back 3 is the upper section of the doors with the rear view mirrors. Here comes the hood and you can see the technique used for the angled side panels. This truck really deserves a massive shiny chrome grille. With the fenders in place the front is more or less finished. Time to cover the rear of the truck, it's a bit tricky to connect all pins. Ok, I almost forgot that we still have a boom to add. Here is the main reason why pins and axles are color coded in Technic. Just check out how difficult it is to distinguish the blue panels, beams and pins in the manual. Imagine this when everything is black. Might hide your hated blue pins, but building it would be a nightmare. Really, the majority of the boom is blue with blue pins and it's quite a challenge to build. Time to add the ropes, this operation certainly requires some patience. The assembly goes in place and we are really approaching the finish line. A little studied build for the end and all we have left are the wheels to put on and we are finished. Let's talk about the look first. This is a real huge badass American tow truck with all the bells and whistles it needs. Huge chrome grille, lots of funky stickers, but there are also brick build decoration details at a lot of places with the half beams, I really like that. There are some gaps here and there, like the ones next to the front fender, but nothing serious. The hood opens, there's a functional 6 cylinder inline engine underneath with some nice details. The engine is driven by the rear two axles through differentials. We have opening doors and a simple but ok interior. As you saw during the building process the steering wheel unfortunately does not work. But we have a smooth hand of god steering option with the knob on the roof. One thing that I'm missing from the truck is the storage for the accessories, well actually I miss the accessories as well. Usually these behemoths have lots of tool cabinets on the sides for accessories like chains, tow bar forks, cables and so on. In this case a lot of space is used for the pneumatic and manual controls, but a few storage options would have been nice, like the ones we had on the Big Red. The truck is full of working functions, let's see the manual ones first. This one controls the elevation of the wheel lift. It takes quite some time and a lot of turns to raise it, but I think there's a reason for that, more about this in a minute. The other knob next to it controls the third axle. You could see how it works during building, a nice extra function and works well. On the other side we have a knob to rotate the boom. It uses a warm gear so the boom in theory should stay in position, but unfortunately this is not always the case. With some force applied sideways, the turntable pushes out that cross block holding the tank gear and the two gears don't mesh anymore. This is an odd setup since it's super easy to fix that cross block in place, here's an example. Since it is so easy to fix, I think the setup was used for a reason, might act as a safety feature that lets the boom rotate if too much force is applied. Anyway, if you are a responsible adult and you want your tow truck to be powerful, then there's an easy fix for this. The other knob operates the outriggers. We have a single knob for both side and rear outriggers, I know some of you might prefer to control them separately, but I think it is fine. Especially if you consider that the rear and side ones have a completely different range of motion, yet they can be still controlled together. The downside of the outriggers is the usual weakness of the linear actuators, they won't be really able to prevent the truck tipping over, as the clutch in the linear actuator does not have much resistance. It's a shame but again a safety feature in a kid's toy, so with some simple mods it might be possible to fix the outrigger at the end point. The dual winches are also operated manually, there's a ratchet mechanism holding them in place. Now let's see the pneumatic functions. There's no air tank, the pressure is provided by the pump. There's only one switch on this side, it deploys the tow bar. Unfortunately the tow bar is not extendable, that function was not implemented. On the other side we have two switches, one for the boom extension and the other one to control the boom elevation. I really like how responsive are all the pneumatic functions, if I compare it to some previous more complex models the difference is really visible. Now let's test it quickly with some vehicles. I have a dusty and beaten up mech here and the concrete mixer truck with a missing rear tire. Well I'm not a tow truck expert, but I watched some videos about them and as I saw normally this bar should go under the front axle of the vehicle that you want to tow. 
Now, here's a little challenge. Trucks at a similar scale either don't have enough space between the wheels, or most of the pinholes are already used there. A possible solution is to position the bar behind the front axle, but this is not really stable enough. As we did not get chance to secure the vehicle to the tow bar, let's see the other option. Finding a mounting point at the rear. This one certainly works better. The truck can be operated easily and the towed vehicle stays in place. And going back to the reason why the elevation of the tow bar is so slow, if it has weight on it, a higher gearing would make it very difficult to operate. Now let's test the recovery boom. We need to deploy the outriggers, safety first. Then let's try to lift the Mac with one hook first. Well, it does not look good. An attempt with both hooks looks a bit better, but there's still a lot of bending. Another usage of the hooks is through these pulleys at the rear. They work much better this time. So, the price is 150 euros or dollars, and we get 2017 pieces with lots of pneumatic parts for this. I think the value of the set for the price is excellent, easily the best offer in the non-motorized Technic range. The building experience, the high variety of manual and pneumatic functions, all the details, the real classic Technic feeling and look makes this set a must-have for all Technic fans. There are minor issues and annoyances, but most of them can be either fixed easily or come from the limitation of the system itself. One thing to mention at the end, I know there is no B model and I don't like it. But apparently LEGO stopped creating them for the larger sets, so it is what it is. I'm sure Rebricable will be full of great alternative models in no time. Please share your thoughts about the set in the comments. If you like this video then please give it a thumbs up, you can also subscribe and tap the notification bell because I will have more videos coming about the new Technic set. See you next time, bye bye!